Welcome back. Today what I'm going to be doing is rather than doing a just a straight up normal review of Pop! OS 19.10 as, uh, as great as that is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do either one or two, maybe up to three, four videos of a basically just a setup and moving in series of, uh, of what I would do if I was running Pop! OS as my main distribution. What I'm hoping this will do is A, highlight some of the new stuff that is in Pop! OS, but as there isn't like a bucket load of new stuff, I'm also hoping that if you find this video sometime in the future and you're looking to run Pop! OS as your daily driver and are just looking for someone who's uh, kind of, you can watch the whole process from start to finish, maybe that'll help you out. So here we are just booted fresh into a, the live DVD in a virtual machine so that I can obviously record it at the same time. Uh, and so we're just going to run through the setup process and uh, and we'll see how that goes. So the first thing we get greedy with is selecting a language. Now the funny thing to me is that uh, this particular system has a very, very different installer to what most Ubuntu based distributions have. And I really appreciate that um, because I feel like it's more polished and it's actually more user friendly than, uh, than what comes on a lot of Ubuntu based distributions. Now, in my particular case, I'm going to be telling it to clean install. That means wiping everything that's on the disk and letting Pop! OS figure out how it wants to partition my hard drive. Now, if you have stuff going on in your uh, if you have other stuff going on in your uh, in your hardware, if you have other operating systems living there, Pop! OS should detect those and hopefully offer you some sort of intelligent suggestion. If not, then uh, you'll need to go into custom and definitely you want to know what you're doing there. So I don't want to glance over partitioning because it is a big deal, but usually out of the box, if you have either a blank drive or you just have some space on your hard drive already, then uh, Pop! OS will do an intelligent thing and, uh, and shouldn't nuke anything out of the box. So I'm going to tell it to select the right drive and I will erase and install. Uh, you can set up drive encryption out of the box, which is again, one of those things that is uh, not unique necessarily to Pop! OS, but it definitely gives uh, the importance of encryption front and center, which I really appreciate. I'm not going to encrypt it this time around because as you know, uh, this is just going to be a virtual machine. And it's not going to have anything uh, of my personal sensitive stuff on it. So we're going to let this, uh, we're going to let this process tick through. And honestly, it doesn't actually take as long as you'd think. And if you do want something to watch, you've got a bit of a terminal readout here that updates every now and again, but I'm going to skip and we'll come back once this thing is finished. All right, and I kid you not, it's literally been about three and a half minutes since I paused the video. And here we are, we're, uh, we're done with the installation. So I will tell it to restart. Now what you'll notice is that there are a lot of black borders around the screen right now. And that's just because at the 1080p resolution, the virtual machine drivers have not fully kicked in yet. And so it's only showing a, a, just a bare, uh, bare bones kind of version of, uh, dis of the display. Okay, so what's going to happen now is that the system will reboot and will be presented with a, uh, a a kind of a setup wizard or something that you would see on uh, on a desktop if you were booting up the computer for the first time. Now, what I like about this is that it makes OEM installations so much easier in that you just need one copy of the distribution. If you wanted to install this on somebody else's computer without having to go through all the login details uh, themselves uh, yourself, then uh, you can very easily install this on someone's hardware, hand them back the computer and they will take it from there. Now, the other thing that is great about Pop! OS is that because they have two different versions of the system, depending on whether you're using Intel AMD drivers or whether you're using Nvidia drivers, you get a really nice out of the box uh, graphics driver experiences, which is not something I can say for most uh, Linux distributions out there. Although the, the situation is definitely improving uh, with Ubuntu these days. Okay, so here we are at Setup Wizard. I'm gonna be the Australian keyboard layout and I will leave the location services on. It's automatically detected that I am in the Hobart time zone and I will now connect my online Google account so it'll bring in my profile picture and that kind of thing. And uh, we'll just skip over this bit. Now, if you're wondering what all that login is going to do, uh, basically it's going to enable the GNOME desktop to uh, edit uh, calendar appointments. It's gonna allow it to manage email and uh, allow it to connect to your Google Drive and some other things. So make sure you check the permissions there to make sure that that's doing all the right things that you think it should. Uh, and also you'll probably notice that there are bunches of other online accounts there that you can choose from. And depending on what you choose, you'll get uh, you'll get some different options there for, uh, for how they integrate with your desktop. 
Um, but it's great to see that Pop! OS pushes these to the forefront uh, when you're setting up because nowadays your online accounts are probably uh, more personal to you than your operating system, which is a weird thought. So as you can see, it's pulled in my name from my Google account and it will also usually pull in a photo, a profile picture as well, which is kind of cool. This time though, I will just give it the mountaintop because why not? I will say next, I'll set a password for my system, which is gonna be a pretty weak one at this point because again, it's a virtual machine. And once we are done, then we can start using Pop! OS and it will reboot into a new session and let us go from there. Now, what I wanna say is that if you are if you are in using a virtual machine and you notice that this is what you're stuck with, uh, this could be a real problem for you because this screen is tiny and I apologize for everybody who's been watching thus far. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, simply install the uh, open vm-tools-desktop. So if I go sudo apt install open vm tools dash desktop hopefully it should go ahead and install it and if it doesn't we should be able to refresh repositories and go from there now interestingly enough what i have noticed is that while uh, obviously pop os 19.10 is based on ubuntu 19.10 and so the repositories that it uses out of the box are going to be the eon ermin uh, repositories however what i have noticed is that it's using the uh the us uh, server by default Obviously, Pop! OS is made by System76, a US-based company, so that's what they would have hardwired into the system. However, usually Ubuntu will uh, will triangulate the, uh, the geographical location that you give it as a time zone to also select an appropriate server from which to give you updates. Um, so it hasn't done it in this particular circumstance, so I'll have to go in and change that after the fact. Right now, we will reboot the system so that we can get a proper display, and then we'll, be, uh, we'll go from there. Um, now, just to give you an idea of how quick this takes to boot up, I'm not going to cut this bit. You can just kind of awkwardly watch along with me, but uh, hopefully it will tick over relatively quickly. And we'll log in and we'll see if we've got a full blown desktop or not. And there we are. So we now have a full desktop here with, uh, with Pop! OS 19.10. It's installed locally on our system. First thing I'm gonna do is I am going to change the background. Now it's also worth mentioning here that uh, when it comes to uh, uh, display scaling, Pop! OS is, uh, this is something that Pop! OS does very, very well. Now I'm gonna set the background and the lock screen to this beautiful mountain picture they have here. Uh, and You'll also notice a new feature of Pop! OS is a global dark theme that's actually been really well thought out. Now, the theme itself is custom to Pop! OS. However, they have uh, worked really closely with the GNOME Adwaita theme so that uh, applications will respect the theming choices and colors and uh, gradients and all that kind of thing that Pop! OS have done. So basically, Pop! OS have, have uh, created or tweaked their own custom theme uh, to much better link in, or I guess base it off the Adwaita theme. It just gives it more visual consistency across every GTK based application. Now what you're gonna notice is that out of the box, if we have a look at down on the column here, you'll notice that the that my Google Drive is there waiting to be mounted, which is excellent if you, if you rely on Google Drive as a cloud uh, based storage provider. And uh, so now we have a pretty functional desktop. Now out of the box, you will notice that uh, you will notice that the icon set does look a little bit different if you've ever used GNOME before. And, uh, and depending on what kind of hardware you're running, you should notice some performance gains with uh, the Pop! OS 19.10 release. They don't really bundle too much software out of the box, which I personally prefer. Uh, but when we open up the Pop! Shop, which is the software center, you'll notice that there are a bunch of different categories that it gives you uh, for installing software after the fact. Now. This is where things get interesting and, it, and depending on where you want to go with your Pop! OS installation, uh, this, is going to, um, this is going to be the forefront of where you get your software from. Okay, so first up, we do have, uh, we, we are going to check to see if we do have some software updates. Right now it's refreshing the repositories, I believe, to see if there are any uh, OS updates there. Now, usually in my experience, the Pop! OS, the way that their software is managed is usually quite good in that uh, the the pop uh, the pop shop is fairly robust when it comes to uh, managing software updates. Now, what I am noticing is that out of the box with the pop shop, you can't actually change uh, geographically where or using a GUI tool, you can't change where the servers are located that you're getting updates from. 
Uh, so that's a bit of an issue. We'll have to see if we could solve that down the track. Now, some other little tweaks that I really appreciate about Pop! OS out of the box is that we do have a do not disturb uh, little toggle here on the notification tray. So that means that you won't get uh, notifications like these pop up if you're uh, you know, doing something important. Now that we've updated, let us see what is inside the Pop! Shop when it comes to the software that most people are interested in. So for example, uh, Steam. So let's talk about uh, Steam support and Lutris and other games. So what I love is that uh, out of the box, um, Pop! OS gives you access to Lutris, which is one of the best game management uh, platforms out there. It helps bundle all the games together that are either native, maybe they run through Steam, maybe they run through Wine or other emulators. Lutris is a fantastic way to combine all of these together. And the fact that you can just come in, search for Steam and or Lutris, and it will present you with all of these options is really cool. Let's see what other software they've got installed here. Well, we've got the OBS Studio. I'll be curious to see what version it is. It's 23.2.1, which was released in June of 2019. So I believe this will be coming straight from the Ubuntu Eon Ermin repositories, but I could be wrong there. You'll notice the pop picks that are coming up out of, uh, out of the center here now that things have had a bit of a time to load. Let's go into media production and have a bit of a poke around. Now, some things that are missing from the pop shop that you don't get compared to the uh, GNOME Software Center, for example, are uh, you don't get as much detail with each of the software packages as to where they're at uh, or where they're coming from. And also you don't get any ratings or reviews, which could be a bit of a bad thing if you're a new user. But by the looks of things, we've got a pretty healthy amount of software uh, enabled out of the box here. Now, the other thing that I don't think is officially supported are Flatpak and Snap applications. Now, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong about that, but it's certainly not coming to the forefront here in terms of uh, presenting itself as an option for people to go and chase. So you can go ahead and install Steam and install Lutris, and now you have a pretty potent gaming setup. You know that your drivers are already up to date because you've, uh, because you've installed the correct version of Pop! OS and you've run your updates for your system. And that basically brings us to uh, the conclusion of our first episode of moving into Pop! OS. Now, the fascinating thing for me is that Pop! OS have done a lot of work in the back end to enable offline upgrades. So basically what this means is that while you're connected to the internet, if you are running on an older version of Pop! OS, you can come in to the about section. There will be an option to download the latest version of Pop! OS. Uh, and then when you are not connected to the internet, it can run in place upgrade. This is really unique to Pop! OS and the elegance with which Pop! OS manages to pull this off is very impressive. Okay. I reckon I'll leave it there for this first episode. Let me know what you'd like to see in upcoming episodes with Pop! OS. Really fascinating, uh, increasingly mainstream distribution. And uh, so I'm, I'm more, than, more than happy to hear suggestions of what I should explore next in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.